It's Conduit News Radio with Paul Harrell. All right. Welcome back to the program. We have uh, in studio with we got State Representative Dan Sullivan is back with us. Dan, thanks for being with us, sir. Paul, good to be here, and I appreciate it. You know, I've been listening to your guest this morning. You've really gotten a lot of wonderful guests on your show. Oh, I appreciate that. that. And, you know, I was conduit sometimes gets a pretty good bad rap on things but you know in the last election cycle you had a lot of politicians on we did yeah i wonder why do you think you have so you get the bad rap every once in a while for being this and that but when it comes election time the politicians gravitate right here to conduit news they don't mind using the platform i don't know i don't know i think maybe well you know they want to they want to talk to voters that's why exactly that's what i think exactly um, so we're talking to State Representative Dan Sullivan. Dan, you uh, were recently. First of all, let's get your take. Midterm elections. What do you think? Uh, what was your general uh, thought? Well, oh, golly. Um, you know, I thought we held our own, but we didn't make any gains. I was hoping we would make some gains. We lost a couple of really strong members from the House. Uh, Representative yeah. Williams and yeah. Representative Collins were very instrumental, uh, both out front and behind the scenes, and strong conservative legislation and so we lost a couple of good folks but the the democrats lost a couple of strong democrats too hmm. um so you know it's yeah michael john gray going down that was uh not not anticipated i don't think no it wasn't at all and uh, representative Baltz from northeast yep. arkansas uh losing two democrats to a democrat yes losing was really uh important you know it was almost important for me because it would have moved my uh, seniority up a couple. But since that makes no difference anymore, right, right, it right. doesn't really help. Well, so basically the balance of power in the House is the same. You lose two Republicans to Democrats and two Democrats lose to two Republicans. And Correct. so it's, right. the, it's the same makeup there. Super right. majority. That's Yeah, and I, I tell you, we've really got good leadership in the House now with Marcus Richmond and Brant Smith. You know, I'm so, so thankful we got two strong conservatives in there, honest men uh, who will work for our conservative values. So, you know, I look forward to the session coming and uh, look forward to what we're going to try to accomplish. All right. So let's get some of this audio here. This is what is, what is this audio, Dan? This is from Medicaid subcommittee you're chairman of, right? I'm chairman of the Medicaid Legislative Audit Subcommittee on Medicaid. Yes. And we had heard some uh, words uh, to the effect of we've had a glitch in a system, but don't worry about it. And, uh, you know, i heard the word glitch and I just wanted to dig a little bit deeper. Well, what 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 is it what is the glitch? Well we run what's called a Paris match, like the city, and I think we may have talked yes. about that on the show before. That far we run that yearly. It, it matches the Arkansas Medicaid recipients to Medicaid recipients in all fifty states. So then we get a report back and that tells us how many people uh, popped on the or showed up on that report. It may be 30, 20,000 or so. Uh, and then we investigate and we find out how many are actually receiving Medicaid benefits are listed as receiving benefits in multiple states. Mm-hmm. Uh, in 2017, we found 30 some thousand people. We yeah. kicked off 25,000 and kept 7,000 who deserved it. Uh, we didn't run the report first quarter of 2018 nor second quarter of 2018. Uh, We ran the report third quarter. We just got the information back. Uh, It was a little over, uh, right at 18,000 people. We've now started the investigation. Uh, We just got the results back, uh, partial results back. We found so far of 18,000 people receiving Medicaid in multiple states, 10,000 should not have been on Arkansas's rolls. So we're getting kicking off 10,000, we found about a little over, I think, 2,500 who are legitimate in Arkansas, and we still have a couple of thousand more to go. Hmm. Bottom line, we have at least 10,000 people that we have been paying uh, Medicaid benefits to or eligible for Medicaid benefits, uh, over 10,000 people for right at a year now. Wow. And we have no way of knowing how much that costs us. Wow. We found found that out this week. So, at least ten thousand people got Medicaid, and we don't know if we spent zero on them or a thousand dollars. We just don't know. So we're going to go through some of this audio. We may not be able to get to all of it. I've got it sectioned off here. We're just going to start at the top. We're going to listen uh, to this. This is back on the eleventh of November, yes. and then you can kind of tell us what what was what this is about. Give us the sure. context. All right. So sure. go ahead, Joe. Whenever you're ready. 
Mr. Chair, you're asking a lot for 100% to go on, on that big well, change. I'm only over. asking what you promised in the last meeting. I asked you if we were 100% ready to go, right. and the smart people sitting behind you <laughs> in a private meeting said we are 100% online, ready to go for sure. Well, are we still there? To break some of this out, let me let me talk about well, the billing just, from providers. Uh, again, no, I, I appreciate I it. I I'm not going to sit here and say we're 100% to go into, on everything. Well, but I don't want to dig into but, um, the details of this. That's for public health. Right. Uh, I just, I've so been told we're ready to go, are we or aren't we? I want to say one of the things you're asking me, though, is on the billing, providers billing, and providers will not bill DHS directly. They'll bill to the passes. And we do not establish the billing between the passes and the providers. So whether I'm sworn in or not, I can't sit here and say that that's 100% Okay, well, let me to respond to that because that. the issue is not the, only the provider, it's the patient. Yes, sir. So if we're I not agree. able to, and we're at this as a team, and our legislative responsibility is not only to the business, but the greater responsibility is to the taxpayers who are paying for the system and to the beneficiaries who are receiving the services. So if this doesn't work, then the taxpayers have invested a lot of money in the system and, um, and the patients are going to miss out on the services. So do you, do you think we're ready for a successful launch or not? I believe we're ready for a successful launch. Okay. And you have letters, I think, from three passes or two passes that are requesting a delay until they, April. They and ask for a delay to April 1st, yes, sir. And they have listed the same things I've listed here, and you think those, their concerns are, um, I don't want to say meritless, I'd like to, but you think those concerns are um, why would they be having those concerns when you don't? I've always, I mean, everybody would like to put things off a little bit. You know, I'm, I'm never exactly ready to leave the house. When I leave the house in the morning, I have to go back and get my keys sometimes. You know, and, and giving myself time, usually I end up walking out without my keys anyway. All right, go back let's and go ahead and stop. So I can't sit here and say I this. kind of figure out where that's going. Uh, we can kind of figure out where that's going. Uh, so th that was, who was that you were talking to, Dan? That was Kelly Link, who is the legislative liaison for DHS. And, you know, the we're getting ready to go move into a managed care model. Uh, and there's more information breaking on this. And I th I've got an email we may post on the Conduit website if you read it. Uh, but I, the pro people who are providing the services don't think we're ready to launch. They've asked for a delay. The DHS and the executive branch of governor uh, met with the passes and with the parents, and they say they're ready to launch um, and start this new managed care model. It's a tremendous change in how we've done business. Uh, there have been delays in information. But the bottom line is DHS is on record now as saying this is ready to launch successfully. Where Mr. Link and I disagreed was, you know, the um, the bottom line is we have a responsibility to our patients, the people who are receiving the services. A successful launch doesn't mean DHS has done all they can do. A successful launch means all the players, the DHS, the patients, the legislature, we're all ready to move forward together. That's the definition of success, not that DHS or the government is ready but that the patients will receive a continuity of care that's in their best interest. And that date is January 1st, and I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Mm. Oh, wow. I'm talking with State Representative Dan Sullivan. Cue up this next clip. Uh, what is this next one about? And uh, we'll get Dan to respond to it. Yo, what does it say? Oh, yeah, this is about, uh, I think this is, uh, this is uh, I guess, uh, Hickey asking for 40 days. Yeah, go ahead and play. Play this. 40 days. Senator Hickey, go ahead. Just short one. I want to make sure because we've said that we were doing this by around October 31st, and I know that the, there's a date. I believe that we've said that we should have a, an answer back from CMS on this stuff. Is it 48 to 50 days? Was that the number that was given? Something along those lines. Is that correct? Okay. Because what I don't want to happen is 50 days to roll up here and we're back down here doing this again. I just want to know, that okay. is there a deadline or is that not reasonable? Just. Oh, I'm sorry, thank you. Uh, in terms of what 
Uh, All right, go ahead. Stop. We would expect. Explain that. What is what is that? What is yeah, going Sen on there? Senator Hickey is the chair of audit, and and we had uh, an audit finding with four hundred and fifteen million dollars that federal CMS said you can't ac account for this. So we broke that down, and DHS and Medicaid worked with CMS, Center for Medical Services, Medicaid Services, uh, and uh, they got it down to twenty eight million, close to twenty eight million that we couldn't account for. And so the, uh, I think early, and Senator Hickey mentioned it, early in October, we were told as an audit committee that we would have this $28 million resolved by the end of the month, that we had to submit a final report and it would be resolved. So this committee meeting happens that you're listening to happened on November 1st. Interesting. And they didn't have the information. <coughs> So we as a, and that's what my subcommittee was also investigating. Mm -hmm. um, and all we were saying there is you told us it would be done by the 20, by the 31st of October. It's not done. Wow. So when will it be done? And they pushed it back. Now, on, on DHS's behalf, you know, if we owe $28 million, we don't want to pay it back if we don't have to. Yeah, like back to the feds. You mean. Yeah. Yeah. We don't, we don't want to reimburse that money. Just like I don't pay my my utility bill until the 30th of the month. Mm -hmm. uh, if I have a, if, uh, on my taxes, I don't pay my taxes till the end. So t to DHS's uh, favor, they're working as hard as they can to save the state the $28 million that we really didn't have the accounting procedures in place to do that. Uh, again, the committee is just asking for, you know, what are you doing? Our role is oversight. And we would we want to know what you're doing, why you're doing it, and be sure that you're following the right procedure. Especially when they give you a deadline, say this will be done, and then it's not done. That's got to be frustrating. Exactly. And we were asked after the meeting, why is it that the legislature doesn't trust or the audit, and the legislature doesn't trust um, DHS? Well, if you've been here for a few years, <laughs> you know why. Uh, you know, just like we were told that 18,000 people, we didn't run the Paris match. And, oh, by the way, don't worry, Representative Sullivan, it was just a glitch. Mm -hmm. no, nothing to see here. But until we dig yeah. into that, there they, is they something They need to, to know see. as a state agency that this friction is appropriate. It's Absolutely. necessary. Absolutely. Joe, uh, cue up the next one. What does the next one say, title? Uh, the Paris this is about the Paris match. Yeah. Uh, l l I want to listen to this. Listen to this. Thank you. Um, this is Dan Sullivan here. Yeah, part of where this originated with me particularly was when we had the Paris match and we failed to do those. I'm seeing that as, and I, from my research, there are, what I looked at, there were only, depending on the year, three to six states who don't participate in that. It's the norm that people participate in that Paris match. Would that be accurate? Well, again, the Paris match, uh, again, states came into it over time in large part based on how much they could invest in their computer systems. And when the fe federal government under the previous administration started offering a more generous 90% match uh, on computer systems, you saw a much quicker uptake. And again, you, but a 10% match in Arkansas is still a lot of money. And... Um, uh, I, I think it is fair to say is states differed by their ability to put up their match. And in re more recent years, we were better able to do, do that because right. of more we'll generous stop. matches. Stop right yeah, there. when I've looked at that, I think... Right. Dan, go ahead. Yeah, that, that's getting into, you know, any time government gets as big as it is, um, we are going to have these errors. And Medicaid is working as hard as they can to resolve those issues and those errors. But when you're, when you're managing a million people who are moving from one state to another, who have children that live with the mother here in Arkansas, live with the dad in Tennessee, and visit the grandmother in Missouri, and they're taking Medicaid benefits everywhere, they, and maybe they stay for six months or a year. Mm -hmm. So you have all of these changes and people rolling on and off of Medicaid. It is absolutely almost impossible for us to manage that. So when we have 18,000 people who are uh, are hitting in multiple states, it can't be a surprise to us when we expand government. Yeah. And, you know, Paul, well, I'm hoping. So, so the government expands, then you got to have the 
the the management the oversight expands yeah. to to try to make it happen yeah so. most of the time we talk about the five hundred dollars a month for arkansas works but there's also that management cost in there that's just tremendous you know we heard and i hope we, to get the tape but i think we heard yesterday the first time that i've heard dhs and medicaid say that arkansas work the arkansas works program uh may have to take a second look because it, as the state has to assume more liability, we don't have the money to pay for that. We wow. built it up on a 100% match. And just like Mr. Smith said in that uh, tape, who's deputy director, I think, at, at uh, DHS, just as we heard him say, people bought things because it was 100% free. Yep. You, know, you get yep. more money from the feds, we'll just take it. Cue up this next uh, clip here. We're going to keep going. Uh, yeah, I think this is exactly what you're talking about, about the, the feds cutting the rate. This was an interesting exchange. Listen. You talked about this as a no-interest loan. People saw this as a no-interest loan. And I know we're making some cuts in some of our programs now, and I support what we're doing, the work requirements. I, I'm glad to see us moving in that direction. Um, you know, essentially, the state of Arkansas lived off of Medicaid with a 70-30 match. And we encourage, this is the previous administration's, encourage businesses to expand and take on clients and build businesses and build services on that and now we are necessarily having to draw back on that and i support what we're doing in that area um, is that what we're is that what's happening nationally or, or nationally are people beginning to cut programs like our our choices and our disability services and and we're scaling back because it seems to me because it we're relying more on state money than federal money, and we have to do that to protect our budget. Is that an accurate assessment? Uh, Mr. Chairman, you're, you are right. As you're the first one to surprise. say that, our camera. <laughs> That's exactly right. Yeah, so uh, yeah, was, what was his response? Yeah, what states were doing, states would take Medicaid money, federal money, and they would uh, wash it around the state. So the feds couldn't find it. When the feds did find it, it would be a year or two later. So they were getting millions of dollars and no interest loans. Uh, Arkansas doesn't do that, um, but the fact remains that as long as we built our systems, particularly Arkansas Works, on 100% federal money, now they're scaling back, going to, you know, I think it was 97, then now I think it's 6, 93, 4.4, uh, it's going to 90%. We don't have the money to pay for the, for the Arkansas Works programs unless we take the money from other programs. What other programs are we taking the money for? It appears we're taking the money from uh, programs that were funded primarily by state general revenue. So programs for our disabled, uh, programs for the elderly, uh, rather than those programs get state money, which they always did, now that state money has to be used to pay for Arkansas Works. Hence, my understanding from yesterday's testimony by DHS, we're going to have to take a look at Arkansas Works because it's that state general revenue going there is to the detriment of very needy programs. You know, we're using state and general. And DHS said this yesterday. Well, I need to get the audio uh, because it's a little bit cryptic, and we're going to have to dig into it and ask some okay. questions. Okay, okay, I got you. The one more clip, just one more clip. And then we'll get, uh, we're here with State Representative Dan Sullivan. Just the next one, the next one in the line there. Let's see, As the federal match rate has, um, is declining, uh, then the states do have to put up a larger share. And that's where you see them now trying to adjust their programs. So the match rate, we all know the match rate uh, for uh, the newly eligible population started at 100%. It's going down to 90% yeah. over time. All right, stop. But we have that, had that, that, we, we do have to go to break, but that's basically reiterating exactly what you just Absolutely. said. Absolutely. And so they're Absolutely. having to shift. You would say maybe the bill is finally coming due. Yeah, the making the making lemons aid out of lemons. It was spiked, <laughs> and now we've been addicted to to the uh, federal money. And now it's coming back to us. And we're going to, you know, the high was really good. Mm. We enjoyed the program. We enjoyed the buildup. But now it's, it's coming due and the bill is due. And we're going to have to pay it with state general revenue. Yeah. And that's going to be difficult. Yeah. And 10% of that, of that whole is a lot of money to Arkansas. 
Yeah, That's and a we, lot you know, of money. And other programs like the S chip program for children, the feds paid a hundred percent of that. It's going back and they're cutting back on that. And again, we have a limited budget. So where do you get the money? From other programs. Other programs are going to suffer. Programs for our elderly, our senior centers, uh, you know, for our, our disabled and our choices. Wow. All right, State Representative Dan Selva, you know, I appreciate you just trying to get to the bottom of things on that, you know, on that subcommittee there. That's uh, that's Thank good you. stuff. We're, we're going to keep digging. Yeah, I mean, you, you guys, the audio is there for itself. Uh, you can you can tell that they're it's trying to provide uh, adequate oversight. We're going to take a break, folks, and we're going to be back here in just a moment. Thanks. Thanks, Dan. Appreciate it. Thanks.